when I have a function that can be represented by a power series at a point, there's going to be a trade-off. If I'm close to the point, I can use series methods to approximate values. But on the other hand, if I get far away from my point, I may lose information about the function entirely. Let's take a look at what I mean by this. So let's consider the function f of x equal to 1 over 1 plus x. So this is just going to be the function 1 over x shifted to the left by 1. Now, the problem is going to be expand this into power series about x equals 0 and x equal to 1. And then we want to find the interval of convergence in each case. So about x equals 0, what am I going to want to do? Well, this thing looks sort of like a geometric series in that this is the answer for the geometric series. And if I had a minus r here, we would know we could write it as 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and so on. So the way we get this to work is I just force a minus sign in there by forcing it onto the x. And now that's going to take the place of r. So when we expand as 1 plus r plus r squared, it's going to be 1 minus x. We square that. We get a plus x squared. Cube it. We get a minus r x cubed, and so on. So that's going to be my power series. For the interval of convergence, we're just going to consider this is my r now. So we need absolute value of r strictly less than 1. So we're asking for absolute value of minus x strictly less than 1. That's the same as x and absolute value strictly less than 1. And then we decode this by just putting a 1 here, a minus 1 on the other side, and then we drop the absolute value signs. So here's my interval of convergence. Let's see what we just lost. So note, because this is my interval of convergence, our function defined by the power series here is not going to be defined at 1 or beyond. So our new graph is going to look the same as the old one, except we throw away everything past the 1. OK, and note, the center here is going to be 0, because this is going to be powers of x minus 0. And about 0, we can go exactly 1 on each side of that. So the interval where it's defined is going to be perfectly symmetric. What's the problem here? Well, we can't go any further, because this vertical asymptote is getting in the way. So that's what's going to shut down us having a bigger radius of convergence. All right, let's see if we can cheat, see if we can somehow do something to get us a little bit bigger radius of convergence. So what I'm going to do is let's push the center out to 1. So instead of being at 0, we're going to move over 1 and see what happens. Same idea, although the trick's a little bit more involved. We're going to have 1 over 1 plus x. I want to get a power series term in here. So I want this to look like 1 over 1 minus r somehow. And then we'll be able to use the power series formula to expand. So our center is going to be at 1, though. So somehow I also have to have an x minus 1 showing up to get powers of that. Trick will be, I'm just going to turn x into x minus 1 plus 1. The 1's are going to collect to give me a 2 plus x minus 1. And now I can factor a half out of this to get 1 over 1 plus x minus 1 over 2. So what's that going to mean? Well, if I think in terms of power series or geometric series, this is going to be 1 over 1 minus minus x minus 1 over 2, OK, like that. So now I can expand this as usual as our 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. And that's going to give me the first few terms right here. So it'll alternate in sign and we'll have powers of x minus 1 over 2. Let's see what the new interval of convergence is. OK, I take our r, put it in absolute values, and set it strictly less than 1. I could push the 2 to the other side. And then we're going to have x minus 1 is strictly less than 2. The way we decode this is 2 goes here, minus 2 goes on the other side. I could drop the absolute value signs. Then I'm going to add 1 to each side. And then our interval of convergence is minus 1 to 3. Let's take a look at the picture. OK, our center is going to be at 1. Our radius of convergence now, we're going to have a 2 on each side. So we did pick up some more points to converge at. We're getting a bigger radius, of, bigger interval of convergence. But note what happened. Even though I moved out to 1, I still couldn't get past this vertical asymptote. So what the graph is going to be here, we're still using our old graph, but now we're chopping off at 3 instead of 1. So this is a little bit better 
by picking our center further away from the vertical asymptote. So this is a little bit of a game we play in analysis called analytic continuation. A little bit more sophisticated than this, but this is kind of the general idea. 